You spent a year of your undergraduate degree studying abroad, didn't you? Yes, that's right, Nathan. I spent my second year studying in Copenhagen. That's what I heard. The reason I'm asking is I'm thinking about applying for a grant to spend a term abroad in Barcelona next year. But before I make my decision, I wanted to speak to some people who have done the whole study abroad thing. You don't mind, do you? Of course not. Great. Well, I was just wondering, how did you find the whole experience? I mean, was it everything you hoped it would be? Or did it fall short of your expectations? It exceeded my expectations. I can honestly say I learned more about life and about myself in that one year than I had up to that point in my life. I can't recommend it enough. If you have the chance, you should do it. You must have faced some difficulties, though, or found some things challenging. Of course. It took a while to get used to living with my host family, for example, and I miss my friends back home quite a lot at first. But I'd say the hardest thing was balancing study with my new social life. There were so many exciting new things I wanted to do, being in a new country, that I found it really hard to motivate myself to do my coursework. The first term I was away, I actually almost failed a couple of classes. It wasn't that the coursework was difficult. I'd been scared it might be, as some people had told me that European universities are tougher than ours. But I found the level to be about the same. The workload was greater, but the difficulty was the same. So what were the best things about the whole experience? Well, meeting new people, obviously, and learning about a whole new culture. But then there were things I didn't expect. Things like how independent I became, and how much more confident I got. Living overseas on your own really challenges you. It makes you grow up. I didn't even understand how much I had matured until I got back to Australia. I'm concerned about the cost of living abroad. Did you work while you were over there? And was it easy to find a part-time job not speaking the language fluently? Yes, I did take a part-time job. I worked in a pizza parlour. I wasn't serving the customers, though. I was just making the pizza, so I didn't need to speak good Danish. The reason I got the job was some of my Danish friends who were working there recommended me for it. I don't know if I would have got it otherwise, as my Danish was very basic. But yes, if you can, it's a good idea to get a job. Because if you're anything like me, it'll make your time abroad more pleasant as you'll have the money to do the things you want to do. And of course an added bonus is your language skills do end up improving, and you meet a lot of new people. So what was it like coming back home after a year away? Well, when I first got back, I was on cloud nine for about a week. But then, I felt really depressed being back. And it became obvious really quickly that my friends didn't like listening to what a great time I had had. I guess they were jealous, in a way so I ended up not being able to talk to them about my experience. It was about six months before I got used to life here again. Unfortunately, getting depressed when you come back home is pretty common. It's a phenomenon known as reverse culture shock, and although it doesn't affect every returning student, there's a chance it could happen to you. Thanks, Anna. You've definitely given me some things to think about. No problem, Nathan. And don't hesitate to come and talk to me again if you have any more questions.